What's up guys, it's Tana. I'm editing this video right now. I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. I just woke up from a nap. I don't know how I can tell you that I'm editing and just woke up from a nap, but I promise both are true. <laughs> but before I get into this video, and I'll probably talk about this at length more at some point. <laughs> as this clip is about to be like how healthy I am. <laughs> My last video of Ashley and I painting those Fashion Nova dresses was definitely filmed during like the darkest points of my year last year in 2019. And during that time, I wasn't really filming much else because I knew that like coming onto camera, I would have to kind of like fake happy and or I would just be like negative the entire time or people would see my like failing health or whatever. But obviously that was one that I like needed to get done for a brand and like I'd already been working on it. In my head, I was like yo painting dresses like whatever definitely finishing that video i expressed it in the video it was one that i wasn't happy with i just felt like it wasn't enough I'm like whatever there were so many comments of people being like tana we don't want this you like take a break rest and like come back like it's always really humbling to know how in touch with me my fan base is like for people to see one video from that time and be like fuck this shit like it's awesome that you guys are my best friends and you can like see that like immediately i just want to let you know especially with my show airing right now showing my like all of my health failures and stuff like perfect timing during that time i did take a break i wasn't filming i was working on stuff that actually like i love and then obviously after i was done shooting the show i took a break and now i finally feel like i'm literally getting back to the happiest i've been in my life maybe ever i know that's like a psycho sentence to say in the intro of this video but i finally feel like i'm like living for me doing everything for me like spending every second of every day creating because that's like what i'm meant to do versus all of the other shit with all of that being said finally getting back to youtube content that like either a if i don't love it i'm not gonna make it if i'm not happy i'm not gonna film it i literally got to a point like a couple weeks ago in la that i was so happy and living like my best life every single day that i literally started daily vlogging because i was like holy Holy fuck like people need to see this this part of my life so those are coming lots of things are coming this vlog is actually one of those vlogs where i just decided to pick up the camera doing a bunch of fun shit like i used to and just like pulled out the camera and it's like so thank you to everybody who said that kind of stuff in the comments in my last video because it means the world to me that you like are always looking out for me and would support me no matter what but i promise you i took that break i took that break during that time i've been doing a lot of stuff to actually try to be like a healthier better me again because i want to because i want to live because i want to be alive i want to document and all of that too and i have been so there will be a lot more videos about mental health and that journey and that break and stuff but for now the vlogs that i'm putting out and stuff like that i just hope you enjoy back to just being like fucking tana doing fucking tana so yeah this is a vlog of me <laughs> going to interview the girl from the bling ring announcing that i'm going to be on reality house season three and then going to the hype house and getting tiktok dance lessons from charlie d'amelio i love you thank you for always being there for me and always noticing the little things I'm gonna fuck off now. I hope you enjoy this vlog. I'm also gonna fix this nail. Top of the morning, guys. Today's vlog is fucking weird. I don't know if this is gonna end up on my main channel or my vlog channel, so wherever you're reviewing this, hello. I never go on people's podcasts. I tried that back in the day. I was like, you know, I'm gonna get myself out there. I'm like a YouTuber, like exposure. Like, and then I realized I'm late to everything and care about nothing, and that's a terrible idea for me. It's very rare that I go on a podcast unless there is A, something in it for me, or something really sparks my interest. With that being said, a few weeks weeks ago hunter came over for some music video stuff and he's like i just finished this girl's podcast and like we talked about mental health the entire time and like hunter owns make sure your friends are okay which i just did a collab with wait hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. Get yours now. He was like, I just did this podcast and the girl was super nice and she said she knew you. That you guys like get your hair done by the same person or something. And I was like, oh, that's dope. Like, who is it? Like, just small talking. And I remember earlier that day watching his Instagram story, seeing that he was like on this podcast with this like cute little brunette girl. He was like, I don't know if you know her. Her name's like Alexis Haynes. And I was like, I have no idea who that is. To say it, I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. And he was like, I guess she had like a really crazy past. I need to put my bra on, hold on. <laughs> I open up Hunter's Instagram story to look at this girl to like see who it is. And it's Alexis Nyers. And I don't know if any of you know who that is. I might be dating myself, like aging the fuck out of myself right now by obsessing over this bitch. Oh my God, my body's so much paler than my face. Don't feel stupid if you don't know who that is because I don't know who it is either. He's like going with me. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, feel stupid if you fucking don't know who that is. She is famous for being in the bling ring, which if you don't know what the bling ring is. Wait, Alexa, what is 
is the bling ring? The bling ring were a group of convicted thieves consisting of seven teenagers and young adults based in and around Calabasas, California. They burgled the homes of several celebrities over a period believed to have been between October 2008 through August 2009. Their activities resulted in the theft of about $3 million in cash and belongings. That's really all they're gonna say. Basically they like robbed the Paris Hilton. Like Birkins, Amari. Like these random teens in LA were like stalking her. Like modern day it would be like based off her Instagram story to see when she was going out of town. Figuring out her security cameras. Going in and like yeah. taking like 30 fucking Birkins. And then she like went to jail for it. Had a court moment. And then E gave her this reality show. <laughs> Why is this my life? <laughs> Called Pretty Wild. Where it was like her and her sister and her mom. And it was filming them during the time of this like court case. She's very famously well known for this scene where she's like about to go to court and she's screaming at someone about writing a press article about her wrong and she's like, I wasn't wearing Louboutin. Like I was wearing Louis Vuitton. This is Alexis Nyers. I'm going to let you know how disappointing There's many things that I read in here that were false. Like you saying that I wore six inch Louboutin heels to court with my tweed skirt when I wore four inch little brown BB shoes. I am petrified, petrified with this story. <gasps> that was beautiful. You did such a good job of expressing yourself. Of like the 2010s, I think that was one of the biggest pop culture things to happen. Everyone remembers when like Paris Hilton was robbed and Lindsay Lohan was robbed and Audrina Patrick was robbed and like all these people were robbed by the bling ring. And then she just like went to jail for a few months for it, fell off the face of the earth, came back like saved by Christ, got married and is like this normal ass bitch now who just like has a podcast. Which there's nothing wrong with that. I think like people can do bad shit and they can grow from it and be fucking saved and that is lit. But that doesn't mean I don't have a thousand questions for this bitch. I'm gonna try to be really respectful about it when I talk to her because like, so how is robbing Lindsay? <laughs> like, is it very like appetizing? But I'm so intrigued and I think it's crazy that she just like has a podcast and has guests on and like, I mean, I guess life goes on, but like, I don't know. Being me too, who's like so fucking obsessed with Paris, I'm like shitting on this girl for like, well obviously she robbed <laughs> And I'm gonna like Shane Dawson it. I'm just gonna go be investigative for no reason today. I feel like I never make videos anymore about shit that just interests me like this because I'm bored. So today we're going on Bling Ring Girls podcast. And then Amari has a reality house reunion, which I might vlog if I don't get enough footage today. But I also really want to keep this like Shane Dawson, like investigative. Where are they now? Like what was it like in the homes of millions of celebrities taking all their diamonds? I forgot to end my Hunter bit by saying Hunter had no idea that this was like the girl from the bling ring and just thought that this was like a mental health like but I guess she is now. I am wrong to hold someone to like one bad thing they did for the rest of their lives, right? Like I would hate to be held accountable for the things but then again like I never robbed like Paris Hilton. My internal monologue is going crazy right now. Back to our talk. I, I decided to wait till we were in the car. Yeah, it happened like 10 years ago and it's weird because I think about all the bad things we did like in Vegas that like I don't want to be known for the worst thing I've ever done for like the rest of my life, you know? Yeah. I think everyone deserves a chance to like, grow and be forgiven, but at the same time, is there a, a line to that? In the ways that like murder is like not ever forgivable. Or is it? Murder, is, I don't think murder is forgivable. Almost someone tries to kill you, so you kill them. As a teenager, you do a lot of dumb shit, and I feel like- But is there a line? Like as, if as a teenager you kill someone, like are you forgiven for that? If as no. a teenager, no, you rob- but you're robbing people, like. Yeah, but robbing is like. In, like we really rob people. <laughs> but also, like. Define rob. You know what I mean? Like, you and I, like. This is a weird clip. I don't even know how much of this I'm gonna leave in. Oh, I'm gone. Can I tell you why the whole time I'm sitting here, like, in my head, so shook, that you will vlog things like this? Like, you're vlogging today. But when Trevor is sucking an. You're like, because that's a memory I don't want to live with, and I don't think anyone on the internet should have to see. I would either. literally be like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want videos of any of that on my phone, in my iCloud. God forbid someone thought it was me. It is so obviously not you. <laughs> <laughs> Amari just witnessed something the other night. With the other night, Trevor decided. And Lila. Me getting my client promo. The other night, Trevor and Lila took it upon themselves to top off our Uber driver. <laughs> and it was the most insane thing I've ever experienced. I was in the front seat of it. Driving the wheel. And I just. Holding the wheel. I took the wheel for the Uber driver because he was trying to unbuckle his pants and he was like really struggling. So I was like, here, just let me help you. Like I took the wheel for him so he could unbuckle his pants because he they, says like, it so casually too. Like, are you fucking literally kidding? <laughs> it's like he's one of the bros almost. <laughs> yeah. 
Amari was sitting like in the front was seat like, playing Boggle on his phone, like word games. We've been so, live on TikTok, <laughs> IG, YouTube. Oh my god, Pornhub. <laughs> Taylor's doing a podcast with Alexis Myers. Haynes, no. Haynes, Haynes. If you guys don't know who that is, it's okay, because I didn't either. But she robbed Paris Hilton. <laughs> if you haven't seen that movie, you should actually watch it, because it is a really good movie, and it's fucking crazy seeing how... But it's also not a movie, it's real life, and we're going to do a podcast with a girl. I have no purpose in going. I'm really just curious as to what the bitch looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to borrow this clip just for that sentence. <laughs> we're going to head over to... We're going to do the reunion for Reality House Season 2. As, as you guys know, I was robbed. Oh I was bling-ringed. <laughs> Kian texted me to come, so I'm going. <laughs> That's it. That's it. She's not coming to support me or anything. Just because Kian said to come. Kian, thanks. <laughs> I'm only being a good supportive friend because Kian told me to. This is going to be really fun. I'm excited to see Dom. She thinks that I didn't vote him in because I didn't want to get eliminated by him. That is the least of my words. <laughs> <laughs> you better squirm before you crawl and crawl before you walk to me. <laughs> We're also trying to get so Tana on season three. I'm trying to get myself back on oh, season three. Let's see what Alexis Nyers looks like. <laughs> you hear that? Oh, Alexis Haynes strikes again. <laughs> Vlogception. But Alexis Haynes strikes again. She's robbing Tana of her time. Stop, that is so fucking mean. Yo, I'm outside of Alexis Nyers' podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's not answering me. What do you mean she's not answering? I, like, how do you get in? Wait, she's calling me now, I think. Okay. Yeah. Stay on hold. <laughs> Hello? Hey, are you in the Sky Lobby or at ballet? Oh my god, queen. Hey, I'm standing by a sign that says, like, grinder. She has an assistant. Hey, guys, I'm here. I'm on set. Oh my god, hi. Hi, hi Alexis. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh my god, queen. Dude, I keep not recording her because we're just, like, talking, and she's just popping off. Everything she says is so <laughs> fucking interesting that I'm like... I had my show in early 2010 and like you didn't yeah. fucking exist yeah so here i was kind of like the shit <laughs> shit show of reality television me <laughs> exactly no yeah and i think what's interesting is here you are and you're showing up as your authentic self and you're owning your shit whereas i shut down the world can't see this and so i yeah. was showing up to this reality show hi but pretending everything was fine yeah and going home and living in a best western shooting up dope every day damn with a ten thousand dollar a week heroin habit and Holy it was fucking insane shit. like i wasn't living in the house that we were actually living in are you ready to dive in? I just literally left my house and I'm not living in it because I can't stop shooting it. It's stop. But I think what's crazy about Pretty Wild is like, I feel like you didn't go into it thinking they were going to make you look the way they made you look. It's like. To be fair though, they didn't sign up for a show that was going to end up being a show about the bling ring. We had already signed the show before. Before it? Yeah. No way. So they just like so discovered your family and they were like. fucking go with it. Roll with the punches. I have no regrets. Had I not gone to jail, I wouldn't have gotten sober and I wouldn't be here to Day. Yeah. And talk about it so that way it kind of normalizes and breaks the stigma around mental health and addiction. It's crazy because it's like the reality show. I completely understand what it feels like to want to escape that. The podcast, Recovering from Reality. Yeah, no, I know. I literally Obviously, just said that's a good title. But also, it's all about us like waking up to your real life. Yeah. Like this Tana is great. You with the lashes and all uh, that yeah. stuff is great. But it's not. But it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. And in 15 years, it won't matter at all. I think about this, I talk about this. Boring. Who are you in 15 years? Exactly, like your you person. Be? Who do you want to be? Like, how oh are you going to leave a mark on this fucking planet? It's, I'll adopt yeah. you and show you how. The sobriety is, like, yeah. really intriguing But to it's me not I... even sobriety. You don't have to get sober. I had to get sober. I was going to fucking die. If I didn't get sober, I was going to kill myself. Like, 27 oh, yeah. Club, like, yeah. I was going to be a part of that shit. Like, oh, I'm my God, I make drugs all the time. This is so dark for me. No. no. The truth is that not everybody who's partying in their 20s is a drug addict. Not everybody, yeah. you know, analyze like our relationship with drugs is an important thing to do and like am I using right now to check out of my reality are there things that are going on in my life where yeah. I'm like hey I was just like I need to start checking into my reality more than I'm checking out of my reality here I am 28 it's been almost 10 years yeah and like what yeah. we had to do like we were willing to fucking hustle and talk about burnout like we would get three hours of sleep every night we'd be partying Monday through Sunday oh my and god and then trying to work in the and day and like hustle your career hustle 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 and so when we <laughs> it's like scary. 
scary. Awesome. We met our like producer. Yeah. And he was like, y'all's life is crazy because we also were like Buddhists. Like we had grown up with a mom who was like this free spirit, pot smoking, hippie bitch that <laughs> would like tell us about, I don't know if you remember like the secret, like manifesting your dreams. Yeah. So we were like, we're manifesting. We're out here manifesting. <laughs> we're really, we're just like sucking dick for like whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> also me! No, yo, so we're like, We're manifesting. No, we're like sucking dick every day. Like, um, <laughs> yo, you yeah. funny as bid. Our <laughs> fucked up childhoods and our parents that were never forgiving and our insomnia and yeah. shooting reality shows and being exhausted yeah. and escaping from them and this. We have so much in common. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But when it comes to you guys finessing, like you were saying, like we, we were pretending to live in the Hollywood Hills and whatever, did the production people know that? Oh, they found out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they, did, they ended up renting us a house in Hollywood Hills, and that's where we would film. And then they got us this room at the Best Western in Hollywood, which was so grody. Yeah. Oh my god. We could not make it to production on time ever. Like, oh my. So they got a house like down. The There's just so many brutal moments too. Like when we went to Mexico, I ran out of drugs, or someone in production or the makeup artist like flushed all of our dope down the toilet, and so we started going into withdrawal. And so everyone thought I was like crying about leaving this like hot guy that I was fucking, and you know. <laughs> You know, and you're like crying about sucks, drugs. But I was crying because I was like starting to go through fucking withdrawals and I was like stuck there for another six days and I was like, what am I gonna do? But I had just so much abuse and so much like sexual abuse that I always needed to numb out and when I yeah. tried pain pills for the first time, I was like, fuck, this is great. And Damn. then from there, I was like, shit. Like, I'm like, been there. So I hustled every single day to find Vicodin and then Vicodin turned into Oxycontin and then Oxycontin turned into heroin and then heroin was like smoking heroin heroin in the beginning and then by the end of it I was like shooting dope every single yeah. day. Wow, with your sister too, which is just that's crazy. Yeah, Are it's you really hard because I got sober and she didn't. It's still? She's better now, but it took several years into my sobriety. So I'm like watching her like wither away. That's and so I'm, sad. Like, sober. It was really brutal. By the time I was nineteen I was a twice convicted felon. Yeah. I'm no longer I have no felonies on my record anymore. Um up until like recently they had that three strikes law. So if you got three felonies you go to prison for life automatically. No. So there was just, like, so much shit on the line like it was just like not fucking worth it for me anymore could have literally sent yeah. you to prison for yeah. life no perspective back then like there was just so much sexual abuse that happened when i was a kid and so much violence in my household and so much alcoholism and yeah. just disease and like yeah you know? and it like almost normalized the addiction and, and it then, also yeah, like you were using it, it to like, escape it, and... yeah i was using to protect myself i'm so <laughs> shook your life story is so crazy to yeah. me in a way like you were set up for that route Thanks a lot of people don't yeah, end up. Jail. That's crazy. So in jail was, I'll stop after this. I swear to God, we'll start this podcast. In jail was when you really had that realization. Detoxing from heroin in jail is like the worst thing that you can ever go through. What is that it's like? So fucking painful. It's like the flu times a thousand. It's yeah. It's like a humbling experience because I've yeah. never had something like that humbling. And to go from shooting a reality show to being in, to jail, being in jail, like it's so, it, like it's being polar. Being in jail next to Lindsay Lohan was a trip the first time. Oh yeah, what we was that like? Together. What was that like? I mean, it was just like a weird thing because I'm like, wait, is this like really my reality right now and that's another super common misconception but Nick Prugo and Rachel Lee were the masterminds behind the bling ring they had been robbing houses of celebrities long before I ever met Nick Prugo yeah I actually never even knew Rachel Lee I meant like people like Lindsay or like Paris or yeah, like anything no, like that honestly like what happened to them was terrible I didn't have anything to do with those burglaries yeah I was only at Orlando Bloom's house damn that is crazy that um, you like really spearheaded the whole thing I yeah I thought that I was like this mastermind who was a part of a huge ring of things but really I was just there for Orlando Bloom's house and not, it's not to say I was so loaded it wasn't planned on my part I was super loaded I kind of like came to and I'm in this living room and a bag is thrown at me and I just start stuffing it yeah and I'm like, Jesus oh, here Christ we go. And man, it but it saved your life thing that ever happened to me so in a weird way Orlando Bloom saved my fucking life Damn. and he saved many other lives because now we own our drug treatment center we're helping people every single That's day so get cool. sober I wouldn't have it any other fucking way. I'm so curious to hear about you helping people get sober. We'll start this podcast. I need to fuck off. I just can't stop asking questions. <laughs>
we just had the greatest conversation on alexis's podcast we did so your life trajectory is mind-blowing to me especially mm -hmm. in the sense that she's gotten so many people help now Thousands. like we just got done yeah that no, was, i feel bad for like making like, so do i what a turn of events such a crazy podcast such a crazy experience it's very sad now to me thinking about her life story because i feel like in a way like mm -hmm. to be so young and to grow up in such a chaotic household hi tag yourself and then to turn to drug get offered this show and, and then like framed like she like obviously was there all, or like yeah. the house, but like to get like blamed for so much more than like, like and in the movie to. the way oh i should have asked her about the movie god damn it you like portrayed it versus the reality it just portrayed her as like the ringleader and to find out she was kind of only there for like one or two of the crimes and she was like super fucked up on heroin it's just really sad i feel like in a way all of the bad things that happened to her like the bling ring shit and everything like she was just like a baby and then now to see the way that she's turned her life around it's very cool experience we're running really late really 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 late <laughs> i can't have this you reputation we're gonna play with the cast and stuff but to make things go very very smoothly because, because we know off miss tv we have the beautiful hunter mark dinner on lana yes reality on oh. winner she said you get a stairmaster you get a stairmaster <laughs> the only thing lena bought is a stairmaster why is she so responsible i want life coach lessons Porsche and I was like, it's too nice. I put it back. I'm trying to focus on the circles on your titties. Guys, Jordan's about to start managing Lena, apparently, so I like no, lost I my whole career. With him. No, I lost rumors, my whole career. Rumors. <laughs> yeah, no, he's gonna drop me now. She's so responsible. Yeah, like, get me a brand deal with my porn star ass. Oh my god, no, you're gonna get them all. He's good at that. Woo. The men, the myths, the legends. Season three. Let's go. We're waiting on you. Really? We're waiting on you. I'm checking my clock right now. Kian, I'm so ready. I'm gonna do some crazy shit. Has anybody ever like done some really crazy shit on reality house i'm gonna like book someone i want to see her get ratchet on there because no one got ratchet our season i'm gonna be on reality house season three guys <laughs> okay so you're gonna be behind the couch we're okay. gonna set you up okay <laughs> and we're gonna give you a confetti gun. Okay. We're gonna pop it. We're telling everyone to get lit, whatever. And then you're gonna, you're gonna say, like, who's ready for season three, bitches? Got you. Some Tana ass verbiage. Oh my god, I'm so excited, guys. I'm gonna be on season three. I'm pregnant. Okay. Look at this rich ass production set. They got a host. They got a fucking Give Hunter a, March over pause. here. Where? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> the last thing we want to do for season two is announce that for season three. Actually, let's let the special guest announce. Who's ready for season three, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> She's coming to redeem for me. All right, guys. So that's the end of this vlog. I should day in the life vlog more because today was a very accurate, crazy day in life. I didn't think I was gonna announce that I was gonna be on Reality House season three, coming with Damari today, but I'm so excited. What's up, vlog? It was out of focus, I'm poor. Guys, I thought my vlog was over and then I left my camera in an Uber and then Taylor invited me to the high bows with him. <laughs> Taylor and I weren't even supposed to hang out today. It just happened by fate. I've been hitting Ken up to hang out for like a few months now and she does this weird thing to where she like reads my text and then just doesn't respond. Oh my God, Taylor, I text you back more than you 99%. You know what's so funny, people. actually, you wanna know what's actually hilarious is that every time that we're on camera with each other, we're coming at one another. Like if you were actually- yeah. <laughs> Like our, we have a lot of pent up like yeah. it's because you go months without seeing me and then I'll just I just have to let it all out because I'm like I'd never know when I'm gonna see her. I know, so but I at least have like... we have the type of friendship where we pick exactly up where we left off. Ah, uh, that is true. Anna. That is true. No, I just don't. That's why I was... my camera battery's dying right as we're going to the hype house. God, I'm so poor. Oh. I'm definitely gonna vlog there, guys. I'm nervous. This is this baby's is first film. hype house trip. The hype house just loses like any brand safe brand deal they've had because they, no, literally. Just just walks in. I walk in and Charlie's like, get out. I have millions to make. Yeah, I actually was gonna work with some TikTokers and then their management was like, no. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah. <laughs> the world may never know. <laughs> a lot of people will be scared here. A and lot. I'll name them. <laughs> so we went to the Hype House. Taylor's going there for content. He does this frequently. TikTokers. I'm not even a TikToker. You're such a TikToker. No, I. So you take that shirt off, you fucking I've move never, those hips. I've never taken my shirt off on a TikTok. Like, I've. Uh, have you filmed shirtless I... ones? We're still fighting. We I, have... Fight. <laughs> I have filmed shirtless ones. Yes. I'm done with this fucking clip. Your battery's gonna be dead by the time you even get there. So I'll use my fucking phone. Your iPhone 4, the one that you. <laughs> <laughs> is that the home button? I see. That's the home button on your phone. You know what? I make, I make millions with that home button. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, guys, we're pulling up to the infamous hype house. Taylor Holder, you're a regular here. How do you feel? How do you feel? Yeah. Taylor, Taylor. How do I feel? Taylor. Please just no cameras when we go inside. I don't like paparazzi. <laughs> I'm entering the hype house and I don't know how to renegade. Like, I feel like such a fraud. Oh my god, it's Daisy here. Thomas is here giving me a tour of the Hype House. We used to be Team 10 members together and then I got a divorce and now he works in the 
Oh my god, there's a theater. That's cute. I was just told that, oh, it got fucking furnished. Cool. Dude, damn. These people are fucking rich. Fuck it up, Hype House. So what's it like to move from one content house to another, Thomas? Which well, one's better? I'm putting you on the spot. Team 10 or Hype House? I mean, I was never on a Team 10. <laughs> Fair <I> enough. <laughs> Thomas brought me to the fucking bathroom. <laughs> like the infamous bathroom. So I can take a thumbnail. <laughs> you came I mean, here before Tana did. But that's because he like TikToks. I just <laughs> pretend to. I'm like, that's because he has friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You are always welcome here, Tana. Aw, I'm always welcome here. Did you guys hear that? It was a TikTok right now. He's like, don't shake your ass. PG. Can we get married now? So we can use. <gasps> Amari was just <gasps> discussing with Lorraine his verification and then got verified. Wait, Jordan this too. Jordan got verified? Oh gosh, like, do your job. Like, what? Amari, you just got verified. Are you excited? <laughs> Inside of the hype house. Well, you just walk in the hype house and get verified. <laughs> no, <laughs> what? <laughs> Shame. Damn, but I kind of like that he just went for Tana's it. Next. I have it like down the middle and two okay. like two hands full. Tana, you go next. I brought yeah. one stroke. I'm scared. Can I hurt you with this? Ow! Oh, oh my god! He was playing with his head at this. <laughs> I should be a fucking barber, Jeff. I'm coming for you. Oh my god! New weave. <laughs> Charlie's making fun of the way Taylor dances right now. <laughs> So Charlie's teaching Tana how to do a dance that she made to her own song. She goes, I made this dance. Okay. Oh, I'm on wrong. Okay, 10% like I rep. Okay. That's a body roll. No fake in my tits. But I'll check hers and like, look at that, make sure they're real. You gotta make sure. Tana's tits are fake. No, they're not. I swear to God. And then you do like this motion. Okay. Okay. Wait. Do you know the words to your song? Honestly, no. <laughs> uh, this is, this is lip. I'm, I'm okay. She's like, is that a home? <laughs> <laughs>